I'm Charlie Barreto, and this is Scoop, your weekly source on the latest in Philippine sports. Tonight, we are featuring our latest sports heroes, the Mighty Sports Philippine Basketball Team. The squad made history in Philippine basketball. They are the first non-Middle Eastern club to win the Dubai International Basketball Championship. No team has done that in 30 years. They dethroned the defending champion, Lebanon's Al Riyadi. The score, 92-81. Mighty Sports finished the tournament undefeated in seven games. It's indeed a mighty victory for the team. A blend of veteran and young players. Ronaldo Balkman led the scoring in the finals with 25 points and 9 rebounds. Let's get ready to rumble! Number 10, Mikey Williams. Number 12, Gerald Lim. 77, Campana. 14, David Defonso. Number 8, Joseph Yo. Number 6, Joaquin Manuel. Four, Jalon Kendrick. Number 30, Bo Belga. Zero, Ferdy Ravenna. 20, Isaac Go. 34, Ronaldo Bachman. Number one, Andre Blatch. And number 94, Mackenzie Moore. Team managers, Jesse and Chung Hu, Josette Marino. Assistant coaches, Dean Castano. T.Y. Tang, Paolo Layug, and Will Voigt. And Mighty Sports Philippines head coach, Coach Charles Tew. Like Balkman, Andre Blatch is a former NBA player. Blatch tallied 21 points and 10 rebounds in Mighty Sports' winning effort against their Lebanese rivals. Former Ateneo Blue Eagles star Thirdy Ravenna scored six points, handed out two, plus a rebound in a 22-minute playing time. I've always wanted to feel what it's like to represent not just my school, but like a, um, a brand or a team na, uh, kind of like uh, professionals, uh, you can say. So yeah, I've always wanted to represent Mighty. I've heard a lot of really good things about Mighty Sports and um, they're all right. Uh, lot Lahat yung tama, very supportive. Um, grabe yung love na natatanggap mo when you're in that team, not just with your teammates, but also with those supporters, Tito Cesar, Boss Bong, Tito Alex, uh, and sa lahat ng mga tumutulong sa team noon. And it's just a great feeling. Well, I'm just doing my job just like everyone else. Um, it really doesn't matter naman if we're the ones scoring or we're the ones cheering each other uh, dun sa bench. So uh, whatever job there is uh, that that's uh, that's part of my role. Uh, I'm always willing to take it, no matter how big or how small. Just expect that I'll give my 100%, just like everyone else in the team. Really, just um, kind of staying in the moment, not really trying to get too carried away from the emotion of the game. Just like every single game that I play in, and I'm just really trying to make sure that I do my job really well. Uh, doesn't mean that you have to be the one who would score. In tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, but Whatever job you're assigned to, you're tasked to do, uh, you just do it really well and do it with the best of your abilities. Just That's what I did. I really didn't think that I had a bigger role than anyone else in the team. Because uh, we all have a role. Uh, it's just a matter of really helping each other out in order to win and making sure that you do your part. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we came in there. Uh, we came in Dubai not to lose. We came in there to win, win it all. And... We really try their best to make sure nga na tama yung pinunta na, yung reason ng bat kami pumunta doon because we really just wanted to represent uh, not just ourselves but the Filipinos, the 110 million Filipinos in the country and the millions worldwide and the thousands who've watched us live in Dubai. Um, really just wanted to give it all for them. So yun talaga. Kahit ano ginagawa ko if the national team asks me to serve the flag and country, I'm always willing to do it. I'm willing to. Uh, play for the country and the Filipinos worldwide. Hopefully, uh, we get uh, international basketball. I've always dreamt of playing internationally, so maybe stay in a different country to play basketball because there are actually offers. And we're, it's just a matter of uh, making it uh, concrete in the plan and really trying to 
um, expose myself out there and really try to stay out of my comfort zone. U.S.-based Filipino Mikey Williams is seen as a future star in Philippine basketball. He contributed 13 points in the finals against the squad from Lebanon. So hello, Mikey, and congratulations. How do you feel that now you guys are the champion? Um, it's a surreal feeling. Uh, we definitely worked hard to get it, and uh, we definitely worked hard as a team to take care of business. So your love for basketball, when did that begin? Um, it began at the age of eight. Uh, I was homegrown to be a football player because my dad grew up a football player, and then uh, I transitioned to basketball and just never stopped playing. Why choose basketball, though? I mean, is it more fulfilling than, than other sports? Um, it was kind of my mom not wanting me to get hurt and playing football because she thought that it was too physical. So uh, I made that transition to basketball and just continued to work on my game and got better. And that's basically how it took off. So take us through your whole journey and experiences in basketball. How has it been? Um, it's been a whirlwind. Um, I've been in the G League, from the G League to the ABL, to the MPBL, to playing with Mighty Sports. Uh, I've definitely seen a lot of places and a lot of experience of basketball, different games, different physicalities, and um, I'll say the Philippines is the most physical. What else could you say about um, the Philippines and um, playing with the Philippine team? Um, probably the best place to play. Culture loves basketball. Everybody surrounding it is always uh, upright and definitely cheering us on all the time. Dubai was the, the best experience I've seen of a Philippine fan base in, since I've been playing basketball out here. What is the most rewarding thing about basketball? I'll say relationships with, like you kind of build a, a, a brotherhood and you kind of build a new family that you never thought you would. Like I feel more at home being with a team than I do at home. And um, just the experience and just making new friends and continuing to grow relationships is something that's unforgettable. What about the most challenging for you? Uh, the most challenging is uh, probably, I'll say, getting beat up every day. Uh, we have some physical players everywhere you go. Like They're going to try to do all the dirtiest things that they can do to you to knock you off your game and get in your head. But um, I'll say that's probably the most challenging about basketball. So how do you overcome that then? Um, you definitely overcome that by just staying focused, being in your own mental, and just playing a game that you know you know how to play. If you do that, nothing can knock you off your, your mark and knock you off your block to get you out of your character. So how do you prepare for big games like this? Um, I usually have a ritual, so I usually eat a big meal, take a good shower and pray, and then just go out and prep and play. And that's been doing pretty well for me. Uh, I think praying to my mom's been the, the best thing for me because she helps me and she gives me that extra boost I need. On another note, let's talk about your tattoos. Yeah, okay, you have the number 8 and 24. Um, those are, correct me if I'm wrong, Kobe Bryant's numbers, right? So could you tell us more about your tattoos? Um, it was basically a tribute. Um, like, I was a big Kobe fan growing up. That's all I got to see. That's all that the, the city of L.A. was, was putting on uh, billboards and uh, et cetera, things like that. But um, growing up, I just saw his tenacity and his Mamba mentality to really will his team to wins and take care of business on the court. And his preparation for the game was outstanding. Like, uh, his work ethic, he'll get up at 5 o'clock, lift, and he'll basically have four workouts a day prior to that lift in the morning. And just that work ethic made me want to get better and just be exactly like him. So I idolized him growing up. And so How did you feel when you found out that he passed away? Um, it was a, a surreal feeling. Like, to this day, I still think that he's still alive and he's going to pop up somewhere like a superhero because that's who he was to L.A. But... Um, I just thank him for everything he's given to the world and everything he's left for people to see and just for people to learn about. I mean, it's just a, a heart-aching feeling. 
On another note, uh, what are your future plans, though? Uh, do you plan to try out for the PBA? Um, that's definitely an option. Uh, I have some other options. Uh, I've been hearing a lot from Japan. Um, I've been thinking about the G League again, the NBA G League. Uh, I don't know, wherever the wind takes me, I'm just trying to figure things out as they go. But definitely we'll be seeing you more in basketball, yes? Yes, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Well, thank you so much. So congratulations. How does it feel to be part of the winning team? Siyempre different. Different feeling sa, sa mga regular na championship na makapanalo na mo sa PBA. Kasi ito, international to, and you were representing the country. And most of the Filipinos are waiting for this mga ganitong moment. So describe your journey. Um, ano po yung pinaka ano, challenging and the most rewarding part? Okay, the challenging part of this one is yung preparation. You only have like 10 days, 2 weeks to prepare for the battle and then yung rewarding part for this one is yung finals na nanalo ka na. So paano mo na-overcome yung mga challenges na to? Hindi, siyempre, those challenges are for you, for you to, to face it and to be better. And it's up to you to how, how to handle it. And challenges naman are part of everyday's life. Eh. So, same thing with basketball. Parang kumbaga yung challenges na yun is pinapatibay ka lalo nun. What are your learnings? I mean, uh, what can you take home from everything that you have been through in this experience? Um, siguro yung experiencing to be with the new guys, with the young guys. Kasi um, most likely I'm the oldest one here. I'm the only professional player who, who is, who's been part of this group. And most of the guys are collegiate players. And nakakatawa kasi... Sa una, magkakapakan kayo dahil hindi naman kayo magkakakilala. But when we, when we were in Dubai already, dun, dun na, dun, 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 dun mo na nakita yung tunay na ugali ng isa't isa na talagang hindi mahirap pa kayo samahal. Nagiging hindrance ba ang age? I mean, based on your experience or hindi naman masyado? Hindi naman, hindi naman. All of us are basketball players. We will soon meet up in the pro. So, um, edad, edad lang naman kami nagkakaiba. And siyempre, Young experiences, because I, I I have like the most experience than them. So, yun lang, yun lang nagatalo. Did you have to work extra harder? How did you prepare for this um experience? Ah, uh, mano lang, pat talagang inano lang, inano lang kami. Prepare lang kami ng coaching staff na, eto yung gusto niyang gawin, eto yung dapat natin gawin. And pagandahan dito sa mga bata, gusto nila gusto nila. Kung baga, committed sila sa kung anong binibigay ng coaching sub sa amin. How is this different sa mga ibang games na nalaro mo dati? Um, the, the only difference is yun nga, um, mga bata yung kasama, yung meron kayong, meron kayong import na talagang inaasahan, and you were playing sa ibang bansa, and ang overwhelming dun is Para ka lang nasa Pilipinas dahil maraming Pinoy na nanonood eh. Come from different places in sa ano ng, du ng Dubai sa mga kalapit niya. So, nakakatawa, nakakatawa. Kumusta naman yung experience mo in Dubai? Um, di na bago. I've been in Dubai for how many how many times? Yun nga, um, kilala, alam ko na rin naman yung ano ng Dubai. So, ano na, um, sanay na. Are there any areas that you would like to develop? Hindi, ako, ako naman every day, every day I wanna learn something new, um, especially in practice. So, yun yung ano ko, lagi kong nilulook up every single day na pumupunta ako sa practice or trabaho. Any future plans? Future plans? Wala naman na. <laughs> ano na lang, siguro, I just wanna win one more championship or more sa PBA. Kasi, medyo matagal na. The last time I won championship was 2016. And 2020 na ngayon, so hopefully, hopefully. What is your message to the uh, uh, aspiring um, athletes out there? Um, to, all, to all the uh, aspiring athletes, um, just pursue, pursue whatever you want. Um, 
Huwag kayong matakot, huwag kayong, walang, walang, huwag kayong magpapigil sa kung sino man. It's your own destiny, you're making your own destiny. Try to prove everything na, or anybody na kaya nyo. Kung ano man yung gusto nyo, kaya nyo gawin. And hopefully, uh, maging, maging successful din kayo. How does it feel to be part of the winning team? Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, winning in itself is an amazing feeling. But I think to win uh, and be a part of the Filipino um, culture is the most important thing to me. Just because it's uh, so much passion, uh, so much love for the sport. Um, and to be just a part of Mighty Sports in, in such a culture from a basketball standpoint, from a person that loves basketball and is very passionate about the game, to see that um, replicated from a fan support, uh, it, it's amazing. So your love for basketball, when did that start? I started at a very young age. I'm a very competitive young, uh, individual, and uh, all my older brothers played basketball. My father was a basketball enthusiast, so um, I was always the shortest one with long hair. So a lot of people used to refer to me as a girl and things like that. So I, like, I took all of that uh, passion and just drove it to be better than my brothers first and then to be the best person in my community and then took that uh, on to, uh, by the grace of God, to be an All-American uh, coming out. So. So when did you know that you wanted to take things seriously and make a career out of it? Um, I'm still battling at the seriousness part of it. I mean, you have to understand basketball is a business, but I mean, it's so fun for me to get up every day and um, to, to go work out and spend countless hours in the gym. Uh, it's my second home, maybe even my first home at times. Uh, when things may, you know, may be a bit um, at a disarray, uh, the gym is, is is my safe haven and it's my um, uh, my cushion. So uh, uh, I still have trouble with realizing that it's a, a business and how serious you know it can be because it's just so so much fun for me. So take us back to that um, uh, your journey. Like, how did you feel when you found out that you were going to be part of this team? Uh, I was just overjoyous because I knew what was on the line. Uh, Coach Charles uh, stressed about winning the championship very heavily and, and he wanted to make history. And so for him to believe in uh, me to help be a part of such a historical moment, words can't describe how special that was. And then to actually see it come to fruition, very, very proud moment. I'm very happy and by the grace of God uh, it, it came to fruition and I'm just very thankful. How was the um, adjustment period? Was it a bit of a struggle or you, um, you blended with the guys well? Well, so the adjustment for me was very easy because the guys just embraced me. All the local guys just really just took me in, uh, showed me the ropes, showed me around town, picked me up for extra workouts. They understood that I really loved to be in the gym. So guys like 30 was picking me up at midnight to go work out extra with his trainers. Guys like Jamie, Big Bo, I mean, it's easy to fit in when you have a bunch of great guys that just really embrace you into their culture, and um, I love it. So um, was the, uh, the experience really grueling, and did you really have to work and step up your game for this? I mean, so for me, I think, you know, you put in the, the, the grueling hours over time, and then you reap the benefits when the lights are on, right? So uh, over time, I spent countless of hours just working out, spending time in the gym, putting up extra shots. Even when I got here, we were in practice, and I would stay one, two, three hours after practice just putting up shots and spending time in the gym. So when the time came to play on the court, it was just like going out there and uh, having fun and, 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 and uh, you know, just doing something that, that's a part of repetition. So. I'm not going to say it's something that I had to step up for because throughout the process, we all have sacrificed and put really, really hard hours into perfecting our craft and just making nudges at being just a little bit better. And uh, when the time came for us to be a little bit better, we were because we played against some great teams in Dubai. Uh, you mentioned that you religiously go to the gym and work out and everything. So would you say this experience was more of like a no brainer for you? Um, and what and what fashion mean no brainer as in like it was it wasn't as hard um, No, I'm not gonna say it was hard just because it's it's basketball You know basketball is something that um, for me It's something I spent my whole life doing and something I love dearly and I spend so much time doing it So when like I said when I hop on the court It's just second nature to go out there and my whole mindset is to enjoy the game to enjoy the experience, to live in the moment. And a lot of those times I've seen great success with living in the moment. 
And um, if you had to improve on any area, wh where would it be? I think that that's the, that's the great thing about loving something, anything, whether it be a, another individual or an, a, an object such as basketball, is that if you love it, it's always ever growing and ever evolving. So as far as basketball, for me, I can evolve in each area of basketball, not just one. So I just constantly push myself to, to grow in each aspect when it comes to shooting, passing, being a better teammate, being a better friend, um, being more coachable, being a, a better shooter, just everything I want to continue to evolve. But I don't want that to overshadow the work that I put in to be in this position um, because it's, it's special and it's, it's amazing that I've made it thus far and I want to make it even further. Speaking of making it far and further, what are your future plans? Um, I have a few things like cooking up my sleeve, you know, maybe I'll be back in the Philippines sooner than I expected, we don't know. Um, but I'm just kind of keeping things kind of like um, hush hush. I had some opportunities out in China, but they're going through some, some changes right now. So a uh, bit of an adjustment. So we'll just see what, what what's, what's next in store. But I see so you mentioned a while ago, I think that um, the Philippines is like your second home. So how important is this country for you, especially with all of the memories that you have here? No, it's not my so this is my first time being in Philippines. I'm just saying like the embracement of the fans and just everything that I've had since I've been here. It feels like a second home. The gym is my second home. Um, but uh, just being here, like obviously I want to visit even more. Uh, I love it here. It's an amazing place. It's amazing culture, amazing people, um, heartwarming people that you have here. And um, I just love to be embedded in it all. And I can't wait to get back and to have more fun, meet more people, have more experiences and create more memories here. All right. So your message to all the aspiring athletes out there. Um, so my message to you guys is to work insanely, insanely hard. Um, whatever you're doing right now, do that times 20. And then after that, have fun, rely on your work ethic. Um, if you're religious, make sure you pray and um, set a goal and don't let anything uh, waive you from that goal. Make, it, make a choice. That was my thing. Make a choice and everything will follow from there. Thank you so much. You. Together with 30 Ravenna, Isa Akko, Dave Idalfonso, and brothers Juan and Javi Gomez Galiano made their presence felt in the yearly tournament. They are part of the Gilas Pilipinas pool for the 2021 FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers this February. Okay, Coach, po. Uh, Coach, did you expect the, the performance of the team to be this great 7-0? Uh, uh, and I'm sure that we expect that our lineup or talagang inexpect na malakas na pero yung performance at turnout po ng laro ng mga players natin did you expect na ganito kaganda uh, to be honest no i didn't i i think our goal was to win the championship there's no doubt about that but after the first few days of practice and our first game it didn't look too good for us pero nabuti na lang everything eventually fell into place the players just started playing better and better and gelling as a team so we were able to accomplish our goal so uh, I didn't think we'd sweep it but we're very happy that we were able to sweep and get the championship um, as a newcomer I really felt like the the whole experience and all was just a, a great experience to play in uh, the Filipino crowd was amazing out there um, me being new I didn't know how many Filipinos there were in Dubai so uh, just the support from them the whole experience and all was something I, I look forward to playing to it I mean, being a part of again so thank you guys uh, seeing my brother play for Mighty Sports in the past few years, um, I've always wanted to know and represent Mighty Sports. And now that I had the chance, uh, I made sure na nakapasok ako. Sina kinulit ko talaga si Coach Charles. Uh, so sabi ko, kinukulit ka talaga ipasok ako sa team nun. Tinatawagan ko siya because uh, I really didn't want to miss the chance. I missed it last year and I uh, didn't want to miss it again. So. Just seeing the support of so Tito Cesar, Tito Alex, and everyone, sila Boss Bong, who were like part of the journey. Um, sarap na feeling na binibigay namin yung lahat ng mga kaya namin every single game for them. And sa lahat ng mga Pilipina na sumaporta sa amin. Uh, not just here, pero dun din sa Dubai. Grabe yung support nila. Um, really made us um, play even harder for them. Kasi most of them actually come from uh, places na hours away na pa sila. Um, and just the fact na yun nga, 
Um, nakagana talaga yung nakahumble, nakataba ng puso to play for my team. So, yun. Uh, for me, it's really also a great experience because uh, in a span of two weeks, I kind of felt how it is to be like a pro basketball player, uh, training with great players and, you know, representing the Philippines. So, yeah, I'm really, truly blessed for this opportunity. Um, ever since niloko na ni Uncle Cesar daw, when can I play for Mighty? So, and every time daw magkasama kami, champion. Kaya buti Uncle tuloy pa yung streak. And I mean, it's honor to represent a brand, um, to represent these great people that we try to admire and the way we act in life to copy you guys. So it's an honor that we get to do it for you guys. And for the Filipino community, we understand that basketball is there not only a love but a religion. So to see the crowd come out and support us, it was an amazing feeling. And I hope that we not only gave them the joy of having to see Filipinos come over and win, but at the same time, the hope that um, they can eventually come home. So thank you. Um, for me, it was a uh, overjoyous feeling. Um, I came here with really no expectations. Uh, and my heart was filled with overflowing love just from the passion and the love and the attention to detail that uh, this country showed and the pride for basketball. Uh, for me, I couldn't ask to play with a better set of guys from a work ethic standpoint, from a passion standpoint, and from a winning standpoint. The culture here is amazing, and I'm just insanely proud to be a part of something so special. So I just appreciate Coach Charles. 30 for taking me up under his wing since I've been here and all the rest of the guys showing me love and uh, for us to go out and win a championship and bring that back is it's, uh, it's priceless. So thank you. Uh-oh. <laughs> and yun nga, ever since we were in Savior, me, Isaac, and Angelo played together for the, for the last uh, Tionglian Championship and Uncle Cesar was the one who took care of us. So being able to play for him again is um, a great feeling and Shemper to represent all these great people. So um, the championship is really uh, what we wanted and luckily we achieved it. Um, as a newcomer, hindi, joke lang. <laughs> Old school na kami ni Joseph dito sa MIT. Kahit saan kami sinasama ni Boss. And, Boss, thank you sa tiwala mo sa amin. Kay, kay Coach, ang question ko. Uh, Edwin Rullian from Balita. Uh, Coach, uh, nabanggit kanina na ang focus ng team eh, international eh, hindi locally. So, after this, ano ang next? Tsaka, ano ang plan nyo sa Jones Cup? Are you sending this uh, intact uh, team sa Jones Cup? Uh, first of all, I don't know if we will still be joining the Jones Cup. If we will be blessed na kami yung mapili ng SBP to represent our, our country or kung ano man yung setup sa Jones Cup right now, we still don't know. But, you know, si Coach, si depende kay Coach Raya, no? But for, for us, anytime we will have the chance to represent the country, we will be down for it. We would love to represent the country. We would try to form the best team possible. I don't know if we can keep this team intact as much as I want because some of these guys are playing for the national team already. Uh, some guys have their own teams to go back to, but ideally in a perfect world, we'd love to keep this team because they're a great group of guys. So we'll just see. Uh, we still don't know what will be our next tournament, but hopefully we can have another international tournament real soon. Thank you. For Coach Charles Tew, this victory makes up for last year's loss. He's proud of his team. We might be the youngest team in the whole tournament, and then you mix that with some veterans, Andre, Ronaldo, Mackenzie, guys who played all over the world. So I think that's why we're very well balanced. We had a deep team. A lot of teams there would only use seven, eight players, but for us, 
we'd use 10, 11 players every game. So, you know, that's why I think we were able to find some success. Well, I just think it takes a lot of different pieces working together, you know, from the management to the staff to the players, everybody buying in to a common goal. And that's exactly what happened to us. Everybody bought into what we wanted and people made sacrifices. And that really helped us to our victory. It feels great, you know, to be honest, we joined this. I've been in this tournament a lot of times as an assistant coach, as a spectator. And we'd always say, wow, nobody likes us to win. You know, the referees, they kind of bully us. We're probably the only non-Arabic speaking country there. So that's a, definitely a challenge. Oh, just great. Just a great, great feeling. I don't know. Words can't describe it. We're just so happy and so blessed to be able to represent the country and, you know, give the fans a good show. Mighty Sports owner Alexander Won Cho King was not that optimistic in the team's chances of grabbing the title. There was little time to prepare. That makes the victory much sweeter. Hello, and um, how do you feel about um, the victory of the team? Well, of course, it's really, it, it makes us proud because uh, there was just a really a short time for us to prepare. And whenever we have the opportunity to be able to represent the country, it always brings us honor. And all the more that we were able to bring the championship back to the Philippines, it really makes us proud. You said that it only took you a short time to prepare for this. I mean, um, but in spite of that, uh, the team was still able to win. How, how, how does that feel? Well, of course, it, it starts with Coach Charles, uh, his preparation. But of course, the team that he built up. And of course, you know, with the help of our sponsors, we were able to put up the best team possible to be able to compete in the 31st Dubai Invitational. But at one point, did you think na baka hindi to makakayanan since everything was just major rush? Yeah, after the first couple of practices and after the first game, we were actually honestly doubting. Uh, we, we were watching from here at home before we went out to Dubai. We were actually a bit nervous because we, we didn't look at tip-top shape. But eventually, you know, the chemistry, the chemistry improved and then, you know, everyone just maybe was just a bit rusty. But eventually, they were able to play up to their full potential. So I, I, think, I, I think, yeah, that's that. It just speaks of their talent and their hard work. And how did the team, based on what you saw, huh, how did they prepare for, for, for this championship? Well, they're, well, the players are all naturally very talented. It's a matter of getting them up to speed. So I think Coach Charles did a good job of put, uh, get, getting their games out. So um, will this um, team compete in other international tournaments? Uh, Mighty Sports, uh, there, there's nothing out there on the horizon right now. But whenever there's an opportunity for us to be able to represent the Philippines, we'll always uh, take it. And uh, well, in terms of the roster, it really depends on the timing of the tournament. So it, it really depends on who's available at that time. So could you share any, um, if you're conceptualizing anything at, uh, at the moment? It's up to Coach Charles, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your message to the aspiring, for example, athletes out there? What do you think it takes to be as good as the members of this team? Well, it just really takes hard work. And, you know, with the grace of God, you'll be able to show your talents and, you know, maybe one day represent the Philippines as well. How do you feel? I mean, I know you said that you're very happy about the, the outcome, but how does it feel that this is the first non-Middle Eastern team that won? Well, all the more, mas proud kami talaga. Kasi, you know, Actually, I think the best placing was uh, second place, or we, we finished third the last time we joined. So for us to be able to bring the championship to the Philippines, uh, well, it's a big feat. Talaga siya. So, siyempre, nakaka proud. Talaga. And that's it for this edition of Scoop. On behalf of Yen Dakles and Eddie Alinea, this is Charlie Varedo. Scoop will be back again next week.